Hello and welcome to video lecture series in sociology. Today we are going to discuss chapter 4 titled as culture and socialization from your textbook introducing sociology. As you know we have divided this chapter into four parts. So far in the first part we have discussed about what is culture, what do we mean by culture, we have discussed about various definitions of culture given by various sociologists and we discussed about aspects and important components or elements in defining culture. Today we will start discussing about how different cultures emerge in different physical or geographical settings and various dimensions of culture. Now culture as you know is a set of learned behavior and results of behavior whose component elements are shared and transmitted by members of a society to its successive generation. But you must be questioning that how culture comes into existence. Culture is a product of interaction of many actors and factors. Let us understand what do we mean by this. To begin with, let us take example of environment or geographical or physical factors into account. Now if we look at human habitations, human beings live in a wide variety of natural, physical, social settings and environmental settings. You can find human settlements in valleys, in deserts, in forests, on mountains or on islands. These settlements have different kind of systems or patterns of social life and setup. In different environments depending upon the existing physical and environmental factors, people adopt different strategies to cope up with natural and social conditions. Human beings since time immemorial have used their intellectual and social skills to adjust to their social surroundings or physical surroundings and improve their chances for survival. In the beginning, small groups of people, mainly the members of kinship groups, were traveling from place to place. These were nomads and they were engaged in hunting and gathering activities for survival. They had developed skills and techniques of hunting and protecting themselves from the wild. These were simple subsistence societies and they were based on hunting and gathering as primary economic activity. These ways of life got concretized as a way of economic activity and social life and they shared their skills with each other and taught their young ones the same set of skills, thus transmitting their knowledge and skills to their future generation. Gradually with the growing intellectual capacities, human beings found better ways to adapt to their environment. They started settling down near rivers, valleys and other sources of water. These settlements led to beginning of settled agriculture in society. Learning and building upon their knowledge from one generation to the next, the human beings started adapting fast to the environment and physical conditions. Spread over different physical terrains, these separate societies eventually developed their own cultures. Cultures which were unique means and a combination of customs, beliefs and practices including language, art, ritual and all that to the specific set of physical conditions and these conditions distinguished one society from another. Learning and building upon their acquired knowledge from one generation to the other, human beings started adapting fast to environment and physical conditions. Spread over different physical terrains or geographical areas, these separate societies eventually developed their own cultures. A combination of customs, beliefs, practices, language, art rituals, institutions and social practices and technologies. And this culture distinguished one society from the other society. Depending upon the availability of resources and natural environment, they developed unique dressing styles, food habits. Not only this, even houses are built in such a way that they are suitable for particular climatic and geographical conditions. It is interesting to note that rituals, festivals and other ceremonies of these communities are also shaped by such factors such as say what is offered to local deity during worship is what is produced in abundance in a given area or in a given season. In specific environments, people adopt different strategies to cope with natural and social conditions and even disasters. This leads to emergence of diverse ways or life of these cultures and societies. For instance, let us take case of tsunami that had hit South India in December 2004. People on the mainland, that is continental India, 
are integrated into the mainstream modern culture and have adopted modern urban living. They were caught unaware and suffered large scale damage and destruction of life and property because of tsunami. Whereas you will be surprised to know the tribal people or the primitive tribal communities like Jarawas, Great Andamanis or Shompens, by virtue of their deep knowledge and experience of physical and natural environment and its patterns foresaw the calamity. They could predict that something is going to go wrong. Interestingly, these tribes escaped the fury of nature and saved themselves by moving to higher areas before tsunami had hit. Another example is of the Zulu tribes in South Africa and this comes during the Cricket World Cup in 2003. And before every match, their prediction about rain was far more accurate as compared to any other weather forecast using modern technologies. What does this show? This shows that modern technology, science or availability of equipment does not make any culture superior or if somebody does not have that as inferior. But surprisingly, it is considered that modern societies have better culture as compared to primitive or traditional societies. And modern societies are considered to be scientific and rational and the traditional ones are called irrational or unscientific. Think of various examples where you can find a connection between physical setting and the kind of culture that has evolved in these areas. Look at the housing patterns of different regions in India and compare them with each other. Do you see these styles are a consequence of geographical patterns and climatic conditions of the area? Yes, they are. You will find interesting cases to compare. Within this background, let us discuss about various dimensions of culture. Now that we know that culture refers to shared symbolic and learned aspects of human society, including knowledge, belief, art, moral, laws, customs of a particular group, society or nation. And it also includes shared language, belief, practices, ritual, food habits, dressing styles, etc. Now among all these gamut of elements, we can distinguish between material and non-material aspects of culture. That is, material means something that we can touch, see or exist outside as an entity and non-material aspects include something that we cannot touch or see, visible to our eyes. Now what are these aspects? While material aspect is tangible in nature and is manifest in the form of artifacts, clothing, food, architectural styles, language etc. The non-material aspects include intangible aspects of culture existing in the form of values, norms, beliefs and practices that are passed on to successive generation and learned through process of socialization. Let us discuss these aspects in detail. Let us begin with non-material aspects. The non-material aspects can be further divided into two, the cognitive or normative aspects. Let us begin with cognitive aspects. Cognition refers to how do we make sense of the information that comes to us. This refers to how we learn to process what we hear or see. How do we make sense of reality? How individuals learn to understand meanings of signs and symbols and how some symbols may be interpreted differently in different cultures. How do we gradually learn that we have to stop our vehicle at a crossing when light turns red and start again when it turns green? Another aspect of cognition is related to how this knowledge is retained and passed on to other generations. In modern societies, knowledge is stored in the form of books and documents. But in traditional societies, when reading and writing was a privilege of select few and printing was not there, knowledge, legend and history was transmitted orally and it was stored in the memory or the minds of people. There were specialists who were trained to remember and narrate accounts during specific rituals and occasions. In the present times, there is technology available to rely on written audio and visual records. However, there are areas wherein there is still an emphasis on learning through memory or memorizing rather than writing and storing things. Indian classical music is one such example. Thus, cognitive aspects as a non-material aspect or dimension of culture mean how we learn and make sense of world around us and this dimension is also non-material in nature. The other aspect is the normative aspect. The normative dimension consists of norms, folkways, customs, conventions and laws. 
these are the values or rules that guide us in everyday life they are the broad framework that direct us how to behave generally now this framework can be further divided into two parts the first part is the non written rules what are the non written rules these are the norms tradition and values in society that we adhere to while carrying out our roles and responsibilities we imbibe them or learn them through the process of socialization for example how do we celebrate diwali or we take blessings of elders in our family or to greet elders when we meet them for the first time these forms of behavior are not written anywhere they are like rules or laws but we follow them traditionally another dimension of normative aspect is a set of written rules these are laws and regulations while norms and traditions are implicit rules laws are clearly written explicit rules law is a formal sanction defined by any institution as a rule that must be followed by the members of the group while the unwritten rules norms or traditions may vary among families groups or communities but the rational formal laws apply to all the citizens within a given society or nation and if people do not follow these rules they are subjected to punishment or penalty for example if your parents ask you to return home before sunset this may be just followed within your family other families in your neighborhood may not ask their children to do so but when you are in a hostel and the rule says that you have to be back by 7 pm then it is a strict rule laws that are formulated and prescribed by the state are the most formal definitions of acceptable behavior in society for instance while different schools where you study may have established different rules for students regarding dress exams or attendance all these are written rules which are to be followed by every student but your school may also have a set of norms that are unwritten but are followed traditionally among students and teachers look for these written and unwritten rules in your school in your family in your society and community and also look for laws that attract punishment if you break them in society but unlike formal laws that apply to all the members in a society or citizens in a nation norms can be discriminating and vary according to one's status or position in society for example dominant sections in society or dominant castes have norms that favor them and reinforce their position of power in society like norms that did not allow low caste people to fetch water from a particular well or enter a particular temple similarly in patriarchal societies women are prohibited to move freely in public sphere although no law stops them to move out but patriarchy or the traditions of family impose confrontations on them the material aspect of culture on the other hand includes the form of artifacts clothing food architecture tools technologies machines mode of transportation instruments of production communication etc from ancient civilizations to the modern times people have been using various objects and things for survival the nature and kind of these material entities are indicators of material culture of a particular society for example we use a traditional hearth or a chula in a traditional society or in a village and a modern gas stove in modern societies this is one example methods or techniques of farming use of means of communication like mobile phones television are all part of your material culture another interesting example is of coins and currencies you should try looking at the types of coins that were used by people from different societies at different points of time in history and you will see changes in them reflecting general nature of changes in society and in human life in sum or in conclusion there are two main dimensions of culture material and non material while cognitive and normative aspects are non material in nature because they exist in the form of idea and are intangible in nature whereas material aspects on the other hand deals with production consumption and quality of life of people but both of them are interrelated and should change simultaneously because for an integrated functioning of society both material and non material dimensions must change and evolve together but when the material or technological dimensions change faster than the non material aspects that is values and norms in the society then the societies can lag behind 
and this gap between the material and non-material dimension of culture is also expressed as cultural lag where people are unable to catch up with the contradiction between two forces influencing their life. Look at the way how material culture has changed over the last 20-30 years in your society and try to find out interesting examples and see whether material and non-material dimensions have changed together. To conclude, let's summarize what we discussed in this lecture class. We started discussing that how culture evolves and what is the relationship between natural, physical, or geographical setting and cultural practices of particular society in a particular region or given area. We also discussed about dimensions of cultures, material and non-material including cognitive and normative aspects. In the next part of this chapter, we will discuss about culture and identity. Till then, you can enjoy reading this part of the chapter. Thank you.